One, two, three, four. Wait, 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 wait. <coughs> Just out of curiosity, how many people do I have in the audience that actually play instruments? Just by a show of hands. Any musicians in the audience? Man, there's a lot of y'all. And somehow I still can't find a band. Anyways, <laughs> I'm pretty sure y'all all know how close a connection we can have with our instruments and that special connection that you feel whenever it is that you play. That feeling that never goes away, that moment when you're playing, when people clap, and even though you feel like not the greatest star out there, you do just for a tiny bit that moment that is the greatest moment of your life every time you play. See, that's the feeling that I get. But it wasn't always like that. See, I grew up in a neighborhood where music was rare to see, where you wouldn't see anyone with an instrument anywhere at all. And when you did, you probably just wondered what party you were playing for. Because musicians weren't common in the neighborhood. It was just that simple. See, it was a pretty dark past. But music to me was the way that I had a future. The thing that I saw in my future that gave me hope. And see, my mom tells a story that it was always like that for me. Apparently I was a big fan of Blue's Clues and I had a little record player. And instead of playing like with my toy cars or my little action figures, because of course they were never dolls. <laughs> instead of playing with any of those, I'd sit on my little record player, my Blue's Clues record player, and I just hear music, start dancing, and as soon as the song was over, I started all over again because music was always there for me. But man, that Blues Clues recording player brings back memories. Blues, blues, very beautiful kind of music, by the way. Let me see if I remember something. Something like that, right? I'm not too sure. But B.B. King, that man was a very interesting character, very legendary character as well. See, I remember I once saw an interview from him because I'm pretty sure we all do that, right? We go on YouTube, we watch interviews when we're supposed to be doing homework, of course. <laughs> We watched interviews and that one specific interview really showed me how important his guitar was to him. How that guitar showed his story. Because he says in that interview how when he was in his beginnings, he was playing at a nightclub and two men began fighting over this one woman. And they knocked over a can that had fire in it and set the whole place on fire. Of course, B.B. King was a smart man, he ran out. But then again, he was a musician. He ran back to get his guitar, put his life at risk. But he made himself a promise and named his guitar Lucille just to make sure to never do anything like that again. But see, that's just one out of the many, many musicians there is out there that would risk nearly their lives for the instrument. One of those people who music is literally life. You hear that everywhere. A couple years ago, it was just a popular phrase, but for me, that's been something that's always stuck. And that's him. But let's see what else there is out there. I'm not too sure I hit that, right? But. Garth Brooks was an amazing player. No one can ever take that away from him. I mean, he's opening the radio for a reason next year, right? And closing too. I've never heard about that before. But man, his career goes way back. 30 years, I think? Yeah. He started off in 1987. And his story is just interesting because I go to a school that y'all know is mainly education. Educa education is your main thing. Education is your key to success. Or so they say. See, Garth Brooks went to college, received a degree in business, and decided to risk all of that to throw his degree aside because music, it just, he just wasn't feeling it. 
business just wasn't it. Music was where his heart was at. So he moved to Tennessee. He linked up with this new brand that was starting off back then called Tagamon. Ironically enough, it's a guitar that I'm using right now. I mean, can you tell I look up to the man? But after 30 years, just last year, he had his own signature guitar because as a guitarist, that's what you do. When you have a guitar that you like, you're loyal to it. Sometimes, the girlfriends that I've had in the past, they're kind of jealous of the guitars because that's what really takes my heart. But hey, that's just how it goes, right? And there's a man who played some really beautiful music, beautiful lyrics, very interesting man. Let me see if I remember this song. his instrument too. He's never left that instrument. It has holes in it and whatnot. I'm pretty sure y'all have seen Willie Nelson's guitar. It's pretty interesting. But it never, it wasn't always that guitar. I think he got it, if I remember right, it was 1969. I think it was because some drunk guy broke it when he stepped on it. I don't think you're supposed to step on guitars. But that's just me. And then he moves out to recreate his career. And man, I've never really traveled, but I've heard people tell me it's hard. At least that's what I thought from that interview as well. Because see, he told the guy from Rolling Stone that he had to sleep in driveways and whatnot. It doesn't seem very fun. It seems kind of dangerous too. But that instrument, he said it always gave him the life to continue and to keep playing. He actually said that he fell in love with the tone of the guitar and that he'd never change it. One of his texts actually said in another interview that his promise to his instrument is so deep that he actually said that whenever his instrument gives out, he will too. I guess he means he'll no longer play. Hopefully, that's a while from now. Really likes music. But see, that's his story. A story of a man that's never given up. A story of a man that's in love with his instrument. Yep. Those three guys really love their instruments, huh? And me, I mean, I'm not calling me B.B. King or Garth Brooks or Willie Nelson. <coughs> yeah, I'm not that good. But it's not just that. It's not just for music is not just trying to play like someone or trying to recreate another artist, especially not after you get that first instrument that you can, for whatever magical reason, you can never get rid of it. Even if you find it in your closet, just thrown in the back, you just never throw it away. And occasionally you have that one little cousin that comes by and grabs it and you're like, hey, leave that alone. Because you know how special it is to you. You don't play it anymore but it's still special. And see me, I try to change that. I try to change the fact that that one first instrument was never sought after again. Not after you got a better guitar, not after you played amateur profession. Not too sure, but I played all right. And this was the first guitar that I ever had. It was or originally orange, and it had like all these holes in it. But that didn't look too good, so I just painted it. But when I painted it, I didn't know how exactly to paint it. I wanted to paint something that represented my life and things that I've been through. And so the white, I'm pretty sure we've all heard in weddings, oh yeah, the bride wears white because it's happiest day of her life. And my guitar makes me happy. And not just that, it makes me feel the purity that my life now has because of music. And see, when I painted it, I had my dad, my uncle, and people helping me out ask, why don't you just paint it all white? It makes it easier. And I mean, they weren't wrong.
but I really, really wanted the guitar to show my life and my story. And that's why everything else is black, because that's the dark past that I had. The dark past that I had of not knowing music, of not knowing what my future was going to be like. And the blue palm, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Blue's Clues is still my favorite cartoon. <laughs> but that's just my story. And that's just a couple stories and a tiny bit of music. Thank you.